Hello and welcome to the contemporary -thon. This week from February 10th through the 16th, I read contemporary books and um, some were good, some were just okay, and I vlogged all of it. So my goal this week was not a particular number of books, but to read contemporary, which I don't always do, and um, also read as much as possible while also adjusting to our new schedule with our new foster placement. We have two girls and um, getting work done. So I vlog reading time. I vlog a little bit about our daily life. My family doesn't want to or can't be in the vlog depending on what family members we're talking about. So um, I you don't see any of like my actual life, but more like my reading life. And I talk a bit about my actual schedule. So I'll show you a little bits of that. Stick around to the end where I will tell you what I thought of the books I read. And um, let me know if you enjoy this kind of thing. Hey, so it's Monday afternoon at around 1 p.m. I'm gonna take a reading break because I, I'll be able to read after they go to bed, but it's not great lighting. So I probably won't be vlogging as much then. So I'm gonna start with them all unbound. It meets lots of the challenges for the contemporary thon, so I'm excited to get into it. Hey, and welcome to Tuesday of the contemporary thon, day two. Today I got a teeny tiny little bit of reading done because I woke up early. Um, so then I got like three pages before little sis got up and then I needed to feed them. And I managed to read maybe another page with her on my lap. Not quite sure if I even understood anything I read. So I'll have to go back and see. Uh, then I've worked all morning. Um, and after little sis got home from Head Start, cause it ends at noon each day, fed her, put her down for a nap. And then while Jay is home, I had to run errands um, I had to get fingerprinted and drug tested because I am becoming a foster parent trainer. Um, just, it's not like a, a full-time job. It's just like evenings, a couple evenings a month, if that. So I've got that done, but that means no reading time and it is like 2.30. So I'm going to go to the library and then pick Big Sis up from elementary school. Not a big reading day, but I did record a podcast that will come out um if you're watching this when this comes out, that podcast will come out this Wednesday about the best books I read this winter. So I did get to think about books a little bit. So on with the day. So what I've been reading on today is Amala Unbound. I'm in the pickup line, the car pickup line at elementary school. So I'm going to read a little bit more because school doesn't get out for a couple minutes. So this line won't be moving for a couple minutes. So it is noon on Wednesday. I have worked all morning and now Jay is on his way to go get our littlest one. And so I'm sitting down to read at least until I get back. So it is about eight o'clock at night and I finished a mall unbound. Actually this evening, right before we put the girls to bed, we had some everybody quietly reading time and I was able to finish a mall unbound. I also read it a little bit in the carpool line today and um, in bits and pieces this afternoon. It was good. It didn't move as fast as I thought. Um, it also wasn't as simple as I thought. I guess I thought middle grade would be slightly more simplistic. It had really complex ideas, complex emotions, um, plus complex, um, I mean, if you're an American kid, complex um, terminology because it is set in Pakistan and just refers to everything. And it's not like it doesn't do the thing where it puts the um, Pakistani word in like italics but it actually just uses the word um and assumes you'll keep up which i really loved and um i'm happy that there are kids books like this out there um the story was good it was good and i think it would be empowering if it was like middle grade it'd be very empowering that this girl like doesn't loop lose hope and she keeps doing the right thing but it wasn't like cheesy right thing it was good i liked it i'd recommend it i'm all unbound by aisha saeed so next up, the wedding party, the wedding party. So I am a couple pages in. 
Okay, so it's about 10 o'clock on Wednesday night, and I am, I've been reading The Wedding Party, and I'm on chapter 7, so I'm 88 pages into it, and I love it, it's great. I've been laying on my couch with Bo, it's probably the most reading in any one chunk I've done since this contemporary thon started on Monday, um, because for the past two nights, I just get tired. My brain like cannot even think to read. Um, but tonight I actually read for like two hours. So that was wonderful. It made me very, very happy. This book is very fun and funny. And it's a romance and it is sexy. It's very much like these two people are very attracted to each other. And, um, it's very cute. Like, it's it's not the kind of thing I normally read. I'm not, I don't like reading about people liking each other <laughs> and falling in love. I think, I don't know, maybe because I've been married for so long or been in a relationship for over 20 years with the same person. Like, that beginning of the relationship stuff isn't that interesting to me. And I mean, that's not to say I think that applies to anybody else. Like, if I'm gonna read a novel about a relationship, which I don't really do, it's usually gonna be about a relationship that's like really complex or just a different kind of relationship, like a mother-daughter relationship, a best friend relationship, a detective relationship, like, I like all those. Um, this is this is good. Like, I, I don't dislike it at all. I enjoy it quite a bit so far on page 88. Good morning, it is Thursday morning at 8.30 a.m. I did school drop off this morning for the girls and now I'm running an errand for my mom but the place I'm running an errand to doesn't open until nine so I debated about what to do I could drive home and come back later or I could sit here and wait and so I sat here and I worked for about 10 or 15 minutes sent emails posted on Instagram and then I realized this is a great time to read and I had a book in my car of course I do did because I always do that's just what I do. So I'm going to read. I'm going to start Saint X by Alexis Shaitkin, in part because I think it's a mystery and I feel like I need a mystery. Um, my reading time is so fractured, as you can tell from this vlog, that I needed something gripping to keep me going. So I'm going to start Saint X. I'm still going to read the romance um, wedding party probably in the evenings at home, but I'm going to do this now. Hey, so it's Friday and it is late for me. It's like nine. And uh, I realized I didn't vlog at all today. Today got weird. <laughs> I went to the coffee shop to work this morning and I read a little bit with my first cup of coffee, as I like to do. And uh, then there's a foster care thing we needed to do and it was exhausting and long. And so I ended up reading a little bit during nap time uh, and then falling asleep myself. And then I got kind of sick this evening. Uh, so I haven't been reading much this week, I think from exhaustion. So I wanted to give you an update though on St. X. So I am 73 pages into it and it's weird. It is not what I expected. I was expecting like a, a mystery thriller and it reads more like a literary fiction. Um, and it changes, so I'm 73 pages into it, and it is, it doesn't have chapter numbers, but it has sections. So, like, one of the sections, Emily of Pasadena. You can see, they're, like, they're very big sections. They're not um, chapters. In these very big sections, the perspective shifts. So, in the first one, you're, like, this um, omniscient third person um, viewpoint. It's, it's written, it's written in a different voice. So it's like, begin with an aerial view. That's the first sentence. Begin with an aerial view. Slip beneath the clouds, and there it is, the first glimpse of the archipelago. Archipelago. I know I'm saying this wrong. A moment, a vista, a spectacle of color, so sudden and intense, it delivers a feeling like plunging a cube of ice in a warm water and watching it shatter. Colon. The azure sea, the emerald isle, islands, ring the snow white sand. Semicolon. Perhaps on this day, a crimson tanker at the edge of the tableau. 
come down a bit lower and the island reveals their topographies, valleys and flatlands and the conic peaks of volcanoes, some of them still active. Then it goes on to talk about the active volcanoes and then you get closer and you see that there is this um, re resort on this island, St. X, and then there's this, they just call them father and mother and the two girls have names and like you follow their story of their vacation which is very kind of biting commentary on upper middle classes the way people interact at a caribbean resort and something happens and then there is one page in like a bold font of somebody's first person narrative and it's somebody like an islander but there's just one page and then the next section like like dozens of page section is from the perspective of one of the girls who was on that vacation. It's first person for her, but she's like a teenager. And that starts on my first day of kindergarten, after my father took a picture of me on the top of her front steps in my purple overalls, and before I climbed onto the yellow bus. Like, it's just, it's like a totally different tone. And then it's her per first person. And then the next, before the next section, there's another bolded of someone's narrative that is someone else entirely. Like, not the person whose narrative you got before, you see it's like bold um and then no title no chapter and then it starts another section the islands which is interesting but so far it took like 55 pages for anything to happen and on page 73 all of the per first person narrative has been about there's been a lot of foreshadowing of like what is about to happen that will change everything and it's just, I guess it's not what I expected. I don't know if I like it or don't like it at this point. It's just weird, given what I anticipated. I don't know. I don't know how I feel. I just, it's interesting. So we'll see how I like it. I'm going to read some more and um, probably go to bed and fall asleep early. <laughs> So it's Saturday. I'm recording real quick before I totally lose the light. And uh, I finished, I just finished Saint X and it was good. I talked last night about how it was a little slow to start, a little not what I expected, but it came together in the end. It's not my favorite mystery ever, um, but it was satisfying at the end. I think some people might actually be unsatisfied by it, but I was pretty satisfied. Now I'm debating about so I have the wedding party started. I can read that some more, but I just got four books at the library today. So, so first up, what was available for me to pick up at the library? Dead to Her by Sarah Pinborough. I have loved the other two Sarah Pinborough novels, and so I am like so excited to read this one. Um, it, I'm pretty sure, is a contemporary book, so it will fit in with a contemporary a thon. So I'm trying to decide between that one. This one, The Other People by CJ Tudor, um, also contemporary mystery thriller. It's actually, I got it um, because of Books and Lala's read along, which is called the Literally Dead to Me Book Club. And so uh, we're reading The Other People in February. It had several holds on it because it's brand new. And so I'll have to read that within the next two weeks before it goes back to the library. And another contemporary book I got is Followers by Megan Angelo. And so I'm going to read all three of these books in the next week or two. And I'm trying to just decide which one to start on tonight and read tomorrow. Hello and good morning. It is Sunday. It's the last day of the contemporary thon. And I decided last night to start Dead Her by Sarah Penborough. It just came out and so I know there's a wait list at my library so I need to get to it soon and I'm on page 154 after reading this morning uh, and reading last night like falling asleep reading. By the way I would have gotten so much more read this week if I didn't fall asleep at 8 30 or 9 every single night. I usually read after the girls go to bed. Jay and I maybe watch something, have dinner, then I read. So basically from 8 on most nights, but I fall asleep at 8.30 or 9, so it's really cut into my reading time. But it is, it's good, it's fast paced, it keeps you like guessing what's going on. It is much more explicit than I expected. So it's a psychological thriller about a savvy second wife who will do almost anything to come out on top. And uh, so Marcy 
is a second wife who is about 35 years old when a new second wife appears on the arm of one of her friends, um, one of her husband's co-workers. They're all part of the uh, country club set in Savannah. Super wealthy judges, lawyers, doctors, and their wives who stay home and don't work. And Marcy was a second wife and she was the youngest for a long time and she's tried really hard to fit in. And then Keisha arrives, who is a young black 25 year old from London on the arm of like a 60 year old whose uh, wife has died. All of that is like in the first chapter. And uh, their competition relationship has a big twist out of round page 100. I'm on page 150 now, so I'm gonna see where this leads. Sarah Penborough's works are always very, very twisty. Um, the last like three pages of In Her Eyes blew my mind. So I'm hoping this is that good. Check back in and tell you later. Okay, so now it is the following Monday, the 17th, happy President's Day. And I am in my car, of course, again, because it is the quietest place to record and it also has the best lighting. So I wanted to like quickly wrap up the books I read and what I thought of them because I, I didn't necessarily do that that well during this week. And I finished a book last night, like pretty late last night. And I didn't vlog at all later in the day because it was with my family. I carried it to the playground on Sunday and then, then I read it in bed and then I read it during um, nap time and I just like read it all day. So um, I finished a book in basically a day and a couple hours on Saturday, the day before. So let's talk about the books I read and what I thought. First up, A Mall Unbound. This is a middle grade novel that follows um, the story of a young girl who lives in Pakistan who offends one of the royal family, not royal family, just like a very rich family in her town that owns kind of everything. She offends one of them and they enslave her. And it is about how she really, it's about her life, what daily life is like, both before the enslavement and after, and then how she stands up to bad guys in order to free herself and others. Um, and how she refuses she says several times that she doesn't feel brave. Like people say she's brave and she's like, I'm not brave, I just have to be. And someone tells her like, you always have a choice. Being brave isn't not feeling afraid, it's feeling afraid and making the right choice anyhow. So it's good, I would love for my daughters to read it. It was empowering, strong, uh, because I realized that the next two books I read and finished, what they have in common is they're the opposite of a mall unbound. Not only because they're not middle grade and they're very adult, but because they really focus on wealthy white women navigating the world uh, with a lot of privilege and a lot of a lot of disregard for the people around them. So the first book is Saint X. I mean, not the first book. The second book I read is Saint X by uh, Alexis Shakin. And this was an arc was sent to me. This is actually being published tomorrow, February 18th, 2020. Um, it is a kind of literary fiction thriller. I talked a little bit about what surprised me while I was reading it. But um, what it's really about is this wealthy white college age girl whose family is wealthy enough for them to vacation on a Caribbean island each winter for her to go to Princeton. And yet she is kind of sick of it. And, and so she tries to like have an authentic island experience by um, kind of fetishizing and befriending the people who live on the island. Some of the people who actually work at the resort. She's like, oh no, I'm not like these other people who would just ask you to bring me your drinks. I wanna go smoke with you. I'm gonna go to the clubs where you go to. So that's the story of the girl that something happens to. And the story, according to the back cover, <laughs> the, book is the book is really about her sister who is just seven years old when something happens to her and how she, kind of processes it and grieves it and how her family handles it and then how she becomes obsessed with one of the people when she runs into them one of the people who is from the island who then now lives in new york city and she does the same thing her sister was doing so she lives in a barely gentrified neighborhood in new york and she's very proud of herself for this she um expects access into authentic places. Um, she sort of uh, becomes entangled with one of the people's lives in a way that she thinks she deserves to do or has a right to do, which is clearly crazy pants. That's like what it's about and some of its issues, 
but if you're like, yeah, but will I enjoy it? So another book that deals with issues of like white women's privilege and how they um, get obsessed with the people, with the black people in their lives and like want to participate in their culture and just expect to be let in is Such Fun Age by Kelly Reed. And that book I kept saying is so fun. So I'll link to where I talk about it. It's one of my best books that I read last in the winter. And um, that book is so much fun to read. It's very fast paced. It has momentum. It's very plotty. This book is more of a character study. So this is more like literary fiction that is focusing on the internal life both of Allison the older girl that something happens to and her young sister Claire, a little bit of the inner life of one of the islanders and it's, it's not plotty, it's not fast moving. So if you like that kind of book, like if you like, uh, I'd say like Donna Tartt's books, it has a lot of similarities to that. I don't know if that helps you decide if you want to read it, but those were all my thoughts about it. And the reason why all those thoughts congealed this morning and I finally realized what I thought about this book is because right after it, I read this book, Dead to Her by Sarah Pinborough. So this book is a fast paced domestic suspense thriller, but it's again from the perspective of a wealthy white woman who um, she actually came from nothing, has married in to the rich country club set in Savannah and it's, it talks calls herself a social climber, says that she has ambition to climb the social ladder and to move ahead and basically to get people's respect because she never felt like she had it at home. And two thirds, a half of the way or two thirds of the way through the book, something happens and then it, there's a crime and you're trying to figure out who did the crime between the three main people. And then there's voodoo. <laughs> so um, the woman Keisha grew up in a family uh, that practice some kind of dark magic. They're in Savannah where people practice some kind of dark magic. You don't know if the crime is some kind of um, supernatural thing or real life thing. Um, so that's that's what it's about. The reading experience is that it's very fast, very gripping. I read it in like a day, but did I like it? I don't know. It didn't, it didn't, Sarah Pinborough's other books, like Behind Her Eyes, blew my mind. I was like, oh my gosh, I love this book. I'll read everything by this author. This was amazing. This book did not blow my mind. Um, the twist that comes a third of the way through, I saw, I knew, like, I, that's what I thought was going to happen. Um, the twist that comes uh, right towards the end, I guessed it. Um, not the supernatural elements, but the natural elements, the person who is at the heart of it all. I guessed it. Um, there's another twist that they that seems like it's a big twist, but to me, I was like, okay, that doesn't change anything. And a lot of the twists presume you have a very closed-minded idea of what's um, of what people are capable of or who people are, whether it comes to their sexuality or their relationships or their race. Um, and so I think she's commenting on that, but I also, I don't know that it's effective. So dead to her. Um, it's it's a fast paced moving thriller. It's not like a heavy character study. It has tons of plot. Uh, it has it has um, has a lot of explicit romantic situations, which is not what I'm looking for in my thriller. So it's it's more like a romance in that way, and that it's like an open door romance, but also it's not a romance because they're like messing with each other's heads. It's a psychological thriller. So um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this book. Um, it's definitely not a five star. It's probably in between a three and a four star. But but as y'all know, I don't really rate books using star ratings. So that's not that useful. Um, I should talk about that sometime. Why I don't do star ratings. Okay, so That's Dead to Her by Sarah Pinborough. I finished all three of those books. A Mall Unbound, Saint X, Dead to Her this week during the contemporary thon so in my mind even though two of the books i was like eh, i had a super successful contemporary thon because i read so much which is what i wanted to do I wanted to see how much was possible for me to read while still working the normal hours i need to work to keep you know my business running and our bills paid still momming during the hours that the girls are home from school um and then reading in other times when maybe i wouldn't and like i mentioned earlier in the video i was so exhausted. I fell asleep many nights um, at 8.30 or 9. 
So in the past, that's been like a, so I guess I'm not gonna read it all. But this time I was like, no, I'm gonna read when I can, sleep as much as I need to, take naps on days I need to take naps, and um, like still get reading done. So hopefully this has been a fun look for you at a normal week in my life. I hope you enjoyed um, learning about the books I read, seeing how I kind of fit reading in. If you'd like to see more reading vlogs like this, comment below and let me know and be sure to give this a video a thumbs up. I enjoy it, so I'm gonna keep doing it really. For a couple, I've recorded a couple takes of this where I said, let me know if you like it so I keep doing it and I realize I'm gonna keep doing it anyhow. So let me know though, so I know that I'm not alone and enjoying it. Hope you all have a fantastic week. Um, this week on the podcast, I am sharing my favorite books of winter. So, um, Tune in for that to hear more about Such Fun Age and a couple other um, thrillers I really loved. In two weeks, I'm gonna be live in person at Midwest Craft Con. So if you are in the Midwest, I'll put a link below, please join us. I'm gonna be teaching YouTube for, for makers and um, self-care for bosses. I love you bunches and I will see you next week.